Okay, this is part two, and what I've done is isolate, isolated the rest of the leg. Now, what we're going to do in this one is actually texture the shin, which is going to be a different. It's going to be a different type of uh, texturing method than we used in the first part, which was the foot. And in the first part, the foot, we only had one mesh we were dealing with. And for this shin, we only have one mesh, but we have multiple elements. By this, I mean we have multiple objects on the same mesh. So it's one solid mesh, but if I use the element tool, I can select different parts of it. Now, one way to go around doing this would be just to add one simple UVW map modifier as a box. Kind of fit that to it. And then add a simple UVW unwrap. Hit edit. I know this is kind of elongated, so I'll go back into this. Copy my link. Paste that on the height. Go back to my unwrap modifier and edit, and it'll be not so elongated. But yeah, this isn't quite the result we're going for. So what we're going to end up doing is actually going in and up applying different UVW map modifiers to different elements in this object, and then uh, compiling those into one big final map. Okay, so we'll start this off by adding a mesh select modifier. And what this is going to allow us to do is select an individual element. So I'll go ahead and select these three elements. And I'm going to use a UVW map modifier to kind of set this to just a simple box. I'm going to hit fit and that's going to fit it to my selection. And so it's not elongated. I'm going to go ahead and paste that in there and make that entire square. And we can do this for the other side. The height. And then I have my unwrap UVW modifier. Now on my UVW mapping modifier I had channel set to 1. Unwrap UVW I had my channel set to 1 still. Right there. So if I go into my edit window it already has the box view of my map. So I can reset. Yes and it will have the same view. There we go. Now, this right here, if I select this, it'll be the actual center of the object. And if I go ahead and select everything, I can mapping, normal mapping, and set this to box. This one folder map as box. And so I can kind of pack these inside here. And I missed some vertices right there, so I'm going to undo that. Make sure I get everything in there. Kind of pack those in. Just There we go. Now I can go in and add a, uh, another mesh select modifier. And there we go. I'd say mesh smooth is the wrong modifier. And I can select element again. I'm going to select this one right here. And then I'm going to add a UVW map. Set that to planar. Copy the link. Paste it on the width. Hit enter. Add a UVW unwrap modifier. Hit edit. And right here we're going to have basically all we need for this one right here. It's going to allow us it's going to be a little stretched out on the uh, sides of the cylinder. So if I wanted to, I could actually go in and select these vertices. Uh, select these. There we go, select these side vertices. I can pull those out and give that a little more of a nice shape. And this will allow me to texture more of the side of my cylinder.
And then I can go ahead and scale this down. And then move that up in the top right. There we go. Now, the final part for this. Actually, after this unwrap, I'm going to add a mesh select just to deselect everything. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Mesh select, and I'm going to add another mesh select. And I am going to select all these. I guess these would be screws holding everything in place. By selecting everything and then deselecting the big objects. And you'll notice I have all the screws selected. So if I apply a UVW map modifier, and set it to planar, copy the length, paste to the width, unwrap UVW, edit, there we go. Now I can scale all these down, and this part's actually going to run my computer quite hard. So. I'll go ahead and scale those down, just leave the size. And what I'm going to do is move these to a, uh, another obsolete part of this uh, map we have here. This uh, blue square indicates that that will be the uh, part of the map that 3D Studio looks at to define uh, where the uh, bitmap is applied. So if I have these up in here and I have a single JPEG, that is going to be where I'm on a texture on the JPEG to apply this map. So if I go into my move tool, I can actually move these up in the top left. Okay, now I got them moved to pretty much a miscellaneous part of the mesh or part of the bitmap that I'm going to use. So I'm going to apply one final mesh select modifier to deselect everything, okay, and one final unwrap UVW modifier to edit the entire texture width. Now, before whenever I set this up. I had these selected and this right here kind of overlapped into it. So to fix that I'm going to go into my unwrap UVW modifier for this one and just kind of pack these in a little bit more to where they're not overlapping. And then when I go into my final unwrap UVW, edit, reset, yes. And yeah, that's still getting in there, so. I'm just going to go ahead and go back to it. Edit. Grab these. And I'm just going to move them right there. And reset. Yes. There we go. Now I have my entire shin laid out on one entire map. So the next step, as you probably know, is save your UBW map as shin. And yes, I'll replace the old one. And then I'm going to render the texture. I'm going to turn off my automatic unwrap. I'm going to add in the defuse channel. And I'm going to set it to 1024 for my bitmap size. Output directory is going to be f colon backslash scorpion. And I'm going to hit render. Mm. 
And there we go, we have our bitmap that we can paint on. So I'm going to go ahead and save that as shin.jpg. It's the quality the best, hit OK, render. And there we go, this concludes part two of the